Welcome, 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 Lunch Learn Link uh, viewers. Uh, we are starting a new academic year. Uh, this is a, a seminar series um, sponsored by the Cigarette Re Restitution Fund Program, and I'm Norma Kanarak. If you have suggestions for speakers, uh, do let me know. Uh, we are offering these seminars uh, for the first uh, half of the year uh, via Zoom. So uh, there won't be any changes or any in-person um, presentations until 2022. Anyway, uh, today we have Dr. Wasim Kalik, a member of the faculty at the Bayview Medical Center. He is a hospitalist and an individual who an in internal medicine doctor actually, who is interested in the prevention aspects of care. And he, because he sees a lot of hospitalized patients, um, he uh, is investigating their use of preventive services um, uh, at, you know, when he sees them, he will, he will ask them about uh, cancer screening, for instance. So this is a study that he has published um, and will be presenting today about inpatient mammography for non-adherent hospitalized women. So Wasim, we welcome you. Thank you, Norma. I just Wasim, I, I also wanted to give you a warm welcome. Um, today's session is being co-sponsored by the Cancer Outcomes and Health Services Research Group. Um, so we're very happy to be part of this first presentation for this academic year. Um, so thank you very much for, for talking with, our, with both of our groups. Thank you for having me. Um, so um, let me just start with, you know, that uh, I don't have any um, disclosure to uh, announce here. Um, the outline for my today's talk is that I uh, will start uh, walking you guys through uh, a series of studies that we did among the hospitalized women before we get to the main study um, to give you some background, you know, where we are coming from and uh, what we explored during that, uh, uh, those studies and then how did that uh, help us, you know, design and address the needs of the hospitalized women. So I'll be talking about uh, studies exploring about breast cancer screening among hospitalized women that we have conducted in the past. Also what the barriers were uh, for these hospitalized women for screening and preventive care and uh, their receptivity towards screening while uh, they were inpatient and uh, how did these women value you know, breast cancer screening. And finally, you know, I will get to the point of uh, presenting my main study here, capturing the rest. Um, as you all know that breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among women in the US and also the second leading cause of cancer death. Mammography utilization um, has uh, been you know, pretty steady. And if this, you review this chart, you can see that uh, it has plateaued since 2000. Um, and we have caught up all the disparity by race almost 76% of the women are adherent, if you see in all these groups, which is all races, Caucasian, non-Hispanic, Hispanic women, and uh, African-American women. Everybody's above you know, 75%, which is great news, which is defined as you know, uh, mammography within the past two years. And this is the specific age group that we'll be talking about in our studies to 50 to 74 years old women. However, the remaining disparity that we think is still left is, you know, can be explained by either poverty level or, you know, low income, uh, which you can see on your left side of the graph, or by education, which I also defined as, you know, uh, the knowledge and information that why screening is important for them. Um, having said that, you know, um, so we started, you know, uh, the thought process of looking into breast cancer screening among hospitalized women in 2012. Um, at that time, uh, in the community, the breast cancer screening adherence was around about 72 to 73 percent, depending on, you know, where do you live in the U.S. Uh, we wanted to know 
how that um, community screening adherence represent this hospitalized population. Because hospitalized women are a little bit more specific group of uh, women who may have a different compared to somebody who is in the community and have all the resources. So the study, the first study that we wanted to do was to determine what was the prevalence of non-adherence uh, to breast cancer screening among this population. Uh, we also wanted to know if their knowledge perceives and their preference for screening mammography was uh, any different than in the general population. And what were their social demographic, uh, demographic factors and comorbidity is associated with non-adherence to the screening. Um, we also um, emphasized and uh, determined, tried to determine what the risk or stratification for this population is. And if these women were at higher risk, were they using any chemo prevention for their primary prevention of breast cancer? And um, since it was a it was a group of study that would also you know determine their value for screening education and inpatient screening breast cancer screening preference too. So the first study that we did was in 2012, what we did was uh, a cross-sectional study. And that was among hospitalized women aged 50 to 75 years old. Our inclusion criteria was very um, simplified at that time. We wanted to see the cancer-free women who are 50 to 75 years old and cancer except for the breast, uh, except for the skin cancer, which is basal cell and squamous cell. Uh, we had excluded women who had any history of cancer. Um, that includes melanoma too, which is one of the skin cancers. We also had women excluded who had dementia or were admitted with altered mental status, acute stroke, MI, pulmonary embolism, pregnant women. Um, women who had multiple admissions to the hospital were only counted towards their first admission to determine if they would be willing to get enrolled into the study. So we approached about 427 women at that point, just by the age eligibility criteria. Um, we found that 14% uh, refused to participate in the study, which is 59. 11% had a history of breast cancer and 17% were discharged before the study coordinator could approach them. Um, this study was conducted at Bayview Medical Campus, also Bayview Medical, uh, Medical Center. So final study, uh, final study population that women we ended up enrolling was 250 women in the study. Uh, what we also found out was only 58% of these women are adherent to breast cancer screening and 42% were non-adherent to the breast cancer screening. This was a little bit higher percentage of uh, non-adherence in the hospitalized women as compared to the uh, general population statistics at the time, 2012 and 2013. So uh, we also access, uh, assess their baseline characteristics. And what we found was that uh, hospitals women who have poor access to healthcare, and that was defined by uh, not having insurance, not having a primary care provider, or annual household income less than 20,000, or current or ex-smokers were more likely to be non-adherent to breast cancer screening among this population. There were no significant barriers between their knowledge and their perceived susceptibility for the breast cancer between the adherent and non-adherent group within this study population. Um, when we asked them, you know, what are their common barriers to screening, uh, a lot of women said, you know, that they were afraid to have a mammogram because they do not understand what would be done to them. Um, some of the women also mentioned they did not have any transport to get to the test. And uh, some women mentioned that you know, they were not consulted by their primary care provider or their physicians. Um, women did have some fear that they were afraid that, memo uh, that uh, to have a mammogram because I might find out something is wrong uh, was their main fear to get it done too. However, the most commonly cited barrier that was you know, cited by both adherent and non-adherent women were that I have other problems more important than getting a mammogram. 
Now imagine this is a hospitalized population who is a little bit sick and as compared to their uh, general population. So therefore, you know, they are coming back and forth to the hospital or going to the physician for the management of chronic medical conditions. The women who were adherent uh, were, did also mention that they cannot remember to schedule a mammogram. And this was statistically significant among the adherent women as compared to non-adherent women. So what we found out were, you know, we asked these women, you know, what do you think about the concept of having a healthcare provider, which in our case, in this study was a study coordinator came to you, talked to you about your breast cancer screening, provided you some information. 89% of those non-adherent women were welcomed this idea that a healthcare provider discussed the best cancer screening with them while they were in the hospital. Out of those 68% of the non-adherent women would agree to have an inpatient screening mammogram if it was due and offered at that time. Um, when we um, explored their social demographic and comorbidities associated with non-adherence, there were three risk factors that were very important to them. One was the annual household income of less than 20,000. Women were at higher odds of having non-adherence as compared to women who had annual household income greater than 20 after adjustment for both socioeconomic, sociodemographic, sorry, and uh, comorbidities associated with that. Similarly, after adjustment for other variables, smokers and patients with a history of stroke were more likely to be non-adherent in our hospitalized population. Uh, on the contrary, women with a history of diabetes mellitus were more likely to have adherence with the breast cancer screening guidelines. That makes sense because women who are diabetic are more likely to be seen in the primary care provider clinic at least two or three times in a year for their diabetes management and they had more opportunity to get counseling. This statistics for diabetes association with adherence is also seen in the community too. So um, we also explored um, the risk stratification among this woman we wanted to know what is their risk, uh, how many, uh, what's the prevalence of uh, high risk population among these hospitalized women. We found out that 32% of the hospitalized women had a five year risk of invasive breast cancer equal or greater than 1.7%. Um, at that time, the literature reviews showed that uh, in the community, um, women with a GAO score of 1.7 or greater were 15%. So this is almost twice the amount of um, high-risk women in the hospitalized population. However, none of these women, when we look at review their medications, were taking or using chemopreventive agents like tamoxifen or loxifen um, for the primary prevention of their breast cancer. And since nobody has explored or knew they were at high risk, none of these women were referred to high risk clinic at the time of discharge. Um, value is a, a, a different concept in you know healthcare to see how women or how person you know perceive how what is valuable. Uh, we use a contingency valuation questionnaire uh, for the purpose to determine how these women perceive and value a breast cancer screening. What we told these women were that current practices not to offer an inpatient screening mammography. However, in future, if your hospital providers would be able to order an inpatient screening mammography, how, what's the amount that you're willing to pay out of pocket to offset the cost associated with inpatient screening mammography? A screening mammography is usually uh, has two costs associated with that. One is the provider that is the hospital, uh, there's a radiologist, you know, cost, which is the reading fees. And the second one is uh, called facility charges, which is associated with any sort of facilities. If it's um, uh, inpatient facilities uh, or it could be an outpatient facilities. The inpatient facility charges vary from facility to facility within even, even within the 
single hospital or uh, single healthcare system. Like in uh, Hopkins, you know, we have five um, hospitals. Every hospital would have a different um, facility charges for that. When we pose this question to these women, we ask them randomly an amount like $25, $50, $75, $100, or $125. And then we use a probit regression model to determine what would be the average mean amount. What we found was that hospitalized women, hospitalized women were willing to pay $83 out of their pocket towards the, their breast cancer screening test during hospitalization after adjustment of all the explanatory variables that could potentially influence their willingness to pay. So that was really interesting finding. Uh, we finished all those studies, we published all those studies, but you know, there were still you know, uh, questions that you know, uh, we were suggested and we were to treat for that. Uh, one of the questions that we were asked was, you know, what's the perspective of hospitalized women? Uh, what was, sorry, what's the perspective of hospitalists toward breast cancer screening, providers who are taking care of patients in the hospital? The second one was that um, can non-adherent women who were hospitalized be educated during the hospitalization and effectively screen after hospital discharge as an outpatient? And the third question that was posed was, do, does non-adherence persist post-hospitalization after inpatient education and risk stratification? Um, these were the three questions that we could not answer, you know, from uh, either of our initial study. We initially uh, uh, got the IRB approval for a cross-sectional study. We did not put in a cohort study. We did not think of these questions at, ahead of time. Um, to answer the first question, you know, we did a quick survey, you know, for the hospitalists in the Johns Hopkins healthcare system, all the five hospitals. They were almost above, almost 100 or above, you know, hospitalists who participated in that survey. And 33% of the hospital would agree to order an inpatient screening mammography only for high risk women, according to that survey. Um, 67 were still not convinced that it needed to be done while they were in the hospital. Um, the, for the other two uh, studies, uh, for other two questions, we ended up under, uh, doing another intervention study. And the purpose of this study was to explore that if inpatient education and scheduling an outpatient mammography appointments for these non-adherent hospitalized women prior to their hospital discharge would improve their breast cancer screening rates. This was a prospective intervention study that we conducted at this time. This was also conducted at Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center among the hospitalized women who were admitted to general internal medicine service. Um, our inclusion criteria was pretty straightforward in this. We wanted 50 to 74 years old women who were cancer-free at, at enrollment, except for the skin cancers. And they should be non-adherent to the breast cancer screening recommendation. Um, the intervention in this part was four you know, point intervention. One was that we provided these women with bedside education, showing them the video, providing them brochures, scheduling their outpatient screening appointment to the choice of their facility or outpatient mammography center with their choice of time, their choice of date, their choice of day. And then we also gave them a reminder call 24 hours prior to their appointment just to make sure that they are aware of their appointment. And if they went for this um, procedure, we told them we will check, you know, if mammography is done, if that's done, we will make you a $10 gift card for the completion of the study. Um, so we uh, reached out to almost 185 women, you know, um, from age 50 to 74 years old. I think that's a little bit mistaken. Um, and then um, uh, almost 50% women, you know, refused to participate in the study. Um, and almost a third were discharged prior to the enrollment. We ended up getting um, 30 women enrolled into our study. And this study was almost an year long. Uh, what we found was you know, that we were only able to successfully get a mammogram in 10 women, which is a third of the study population. 
um, our goal for this study was for success was at least 50% of women, we should be able to have an inpatient mammography done, which, uh, sorry, uh, outpatient mammography done, which we did not meet the goal. But if you see the baseline characteristics of these women who went and not, uh, or did not receive a mammography, although the study population is limited 30, you would see that race was statistically significant. More Caucasian women ended up getting, receiving a mammography as an outpatient as compared to more African-American women. Here. You would also note that women who were admitted as observation as compared to an inpatient admission were more likely to get a mammography. The difference between an inpatient admission and an observation admission is observation admissions are usually done if person is sick but not too sick, they just need to be monitored uh, maybe for 24 to 48 hours. And those admissions as an observations are considered as an outpatient admissions in the hospital setting too. Whereas inpatient admissions are those patients who are sick and who wouldn't require you know, days you know, to recover from their acute illness at that time. And this is also reflected if you see the length of stay in the hospital was almost 2.4 days on, on average as compared to 4.2 days in the inpatient setting. Average nationwide um, length of stay for hospitalized inpatients are somewhere between three to five days. Um, so this study concluded that a multi-pronged intervention was only partially successful for improving breast cancer screening adherence, but fell short of the goal. Not feeling well enough after the hospitalization and not having insurance were reported as major barrier. We did call all those 30 women back. We did get some of their responses back and from those women too who did not show up to the appointment. Um, so uh, having you know, gone through this whole studies, we know that improving breast cancer screening through inpatient education has been evaluated with some success. However, screening mammography has never been offered in the inpatient setting. Bowling uh, did a study that was published in 2005 that shows an inpatient education using brochures to describe and encourage screening mammography among hospitals women, hospitalized women uh, resulted in 15% increase in adherence to breast cancer screening following their discharge. We, on the other hand, in our study reported that we can increase to 33% if you do more proactive um, outpatient, follow, uh, outpatient appointment setup and a little bit of monetary incentive among hospitalist non-adherent women. However, both these studies results reiterate that there were significant barriers still exist in securing mammography following discharge from the hospital. And these barriers are not markedly different from the barriers related to breast cancer screening noted at any other time and in any other population as compared to um, the general population. So uh, that was the whole background or concept why we ended up doing this final study that is um, capturing the rest in patient screening mammography. The goal of this study was to explore actually the feasibility of having an inpatient mammography for non-adherent hospitalized women. Non-adherence in this study was defined as as like our previous studies too, was defined as having a screening mammography more than 24 months before the study enrollment among women aged 52 years or greater in accordance to US Preventive Service Task Force guidelines. In addition to that, women who were between the age 50 to, uh, 50 to 52 years who had never had a mammogram were also considered non-adherent to breast cancer screening and were offered enrollment in our study. Um, there were not that many women from that, if I remember it, it, the number ranged between three to four, the total for our study enrollment. So we used a prospective intervention study that was conducted among hospitalized women, again, admitted to general internal medicine service at the hospitalist. This time we did the study at Howard County General Hospital. Our inclusion criteria was a little bit more stringent this time. Uh, we wanted to have cancer-free women. Our age criteria was 50 to 74 years. Women needs to be non-adherent to breast cancer, breast cancer screening recommendations. 
admitted only to medicine service and have medical insurance. Um, the last point that uh, we put it in there was medical insurance because we had to struggle with the IRV to uh, define what the safety net would be if patients are uninsured. Um, so insurance was not primary, was never the primary focus of this study. The focus of this study was to see what the feasibility of getting a mammography actually done in the hospital is possible. Our exclusion criteria was pretty extensive. If any woman has history of breast cancer or any other cancer, except scan, was excluded. Serious comorbidities with life expectancy less than 10%. That includes end-stage renal disease on hemodialysis, end-stage liver disease on cirrhosis, hospice or comfort care patients, advanced HIV disease. So there was a list of those things that had life expectancy less than 10 years. Uh, dementia or admissions with altered mental status, patients who cannot or unable to provide consent for the study, acute or chronic disability manifesting as inability to stand for more than 20 minutes for the test. Um, because these women wouldn't be going for a screening test where they had to stand. Um, some of the population that gets admitted to the hospital are coming from long-term care facility, rehab, rehab, rehab facilities, and those women who are chronically bedbound may not be able to be qualify for this study. Women who were admitted with acute coronary event, acute stroke, or acute pulmonary embolism were also excluded. We also excluded women who had a breast cancer or breast abscess. And a patient who had multiple admissions during the study period were only approached during their first hospitalization. So uh, study enrollment and intervention, uh, every day, you know, I think uh, it was myself or, you know, uh, Colleen, you know, who generated a list of uh, uh, hospitalized women who were admitted to the hospitalist service age 50 to 74 years old and who are cancer free according to their medical records. Um, then uh, study coordinators then reach out to these patients in their room to determine if they were non-adherent to breast cancer screening guidelines. Um, there is not a robust way in the electronic medical record where you can uh, determine if somebody's adherent or non-adherent to breast cancer screening. Um, and after, you know, patients have um, stated that they are non-adherent, then uh, the study coordinator enrolled those patients and obtained a concert consent to participate in the study. If the patients are agreeable to, con uh, to consent, uh, then uh, the study coordinator contacts hospital provider, which is hospital's wide text page, requesting them uh, an inpatient screening mammography order, telling them that your patient is eligible and consenting for inpatient mammography. Um, women who decided not to enroll in the study were left with a uh, information educational brochures for you know their sake. We could not understand or we did not have uh, IRB to determine why did they refused to participate. Intervention was providing one-on-one -on -one bedside education about the risk and benefits of screening mammography and their handouts and offering an inpatient screening mammography. Uh, I would like to mention here that uh, uh, the screening uh, mammography suite at Howard County, you know, the staff was excellent there. They were very supportive of the study and without them, we would not have, you know, gone through for this whole study procedures. Um, now, uh, I just wanted to give you one slide here, uh, information that was also part of the consent. So everybody understands what we're doing there in this screening part. Study paid for all the inpatient screening mammography for their routine view. There are two routine views or three routine views sometimes. But study also made it clear that diagnostic mammogram would not be covered by the study. Instead, patient's insurance should cover those costs for diagnostic mammogram. Um, after routine screening view, if additional images are needed, then the study would cover the cost of additional images if those were obtained while the patient is in the hospital during that hospital stay. And consider those additional images as routine view because sometimes uh, the radiologist would like to have an additional view for them. Sometimes radiologists want to compare the screening images uh, with previous films and images to determine if this is an old uh, 
uh, uh, old you know artifact that has been present in the new artifact and in that situation if the radiologist just uh, suggest follow up once uh, the previous images are available then the report for that mammography is not going to be complete any additional images based on inpatient screening mammography done as an outpatient would not uh, will should be covered by their uh, primary insurance not by the study and finally, um, if a, a new mass is found on the screening mammogram, and the patients would be referred to breast cancer's clinic at Howard County General Hospital. And both physician's visit and imaging center visit should be billed to the patient's insurance. Um, so uh, before, you know, uh, while, you know, patients being enrolled, um, hospitals been aware that, you know, patients are agreeable to have a mammography. We did collect a lot of information going through the survey uh, of the information that we had before the intervention. That included social demographic, uh, such as race, education, annual household income. We also asked them questions related to, you know, their breast cancer uh, risk factors, uh, including reproductive history, family history of breast cancer, and then the factors that are we need for uh, determining Gale breast prediction score. Access to healthcare insurance, so they all had health insurance, so they all had almost, you know, primary care provider. Uh, and then we determined their disease burden by Charleston comorbidity index uh, diseases. And some of the comorbidities that were not included in that index were also ascertained during that uh, pre-intervention measures. Uh, Post-intervention was uh, mammography was done uh, or during mammography, we kept a log. Uh, related to the mammogram, the time from the consent to the placement of an order, from time from placing an order to actually getting to the mammography suite, time for the mammography test itself, and then uh, time from the end of the test to generating the final report by radiologist. Uh, these measures was some of them were informational and some of them were to determine, you know, if that is going to be a barrier for discharge or not. Uh, we once the intervention was done, we also service patients, nurses, and physicians uh, taking care of the patient on the day of enrollment or the intervention. Uh, Post study, patients survey to determine their perspective how the procedure or intervention was, and then follow up on mammography report to share with that patient and also faxed and shared it to their primary care provider. So <clears throat> we started with, you know, uh, 312 women, uh, and this is from January 2015 to October 2016. Uh, uh, Hospitalized women uh, aged 50 to 70 years who were admitted to internal medicine or hospitalist service at Howard County General Hospital. Um, 122 women, which is 39%, refused to participate in that study. Again, we do not know either they were adherent or non-adherent, and we also do not know the reasoning that they refused for to participate in the study. Um, almost 89, which is third of the study population, was discharged prior to uh, their enrollment. And, and that's how we ended up getting the final study population of uh, 101 women, which is one third of the study population that was approached um, for the participation. Now, uh, when we looked at up their baseline characteristics, uh, this looks like a little bit younger, you know, cohort here, you know, which is a means age was for 59.3 years. Um, 29 uh, women were African-Americans, so it had a good diversity, about a third of the population. All study population participants uh, had medical insurance. 35 women were at higher risk of developing breast cancer, according to five-year risk prediction using Gale risk model score of 1.7% uh, or more. And this is pretty consistent in our Bayview population too. It was 32% when we determined there. 10, of, uh, 10 women in the study and never had any mammogram done. And 31% um, to put it annual household income less than 20,000. Um, you can see uh, the economical part here is in baby population, about 61% of the women had reported their annual household income less than 20,000 as compared to Howard County, where, you know, women had only 31%. So um, some of those differences were, avail uh, were there present in this population as compared to the baby population. So we um, had 101 women. 
uh, what we were successful in achieving, and we were really excited. And we were kind of surprised too that it was you know 79 uh, women actually ended up getting the screen mammography done, and it was very efficiently done. 22 women we were not able to get any mammography done, and I would go into those reasons a little bit later. But the woman who actually went for the screening mammography and got it done, um, 27 of them required additional testing, uh, additional images, and those were done. Um, almost 40% uh, of these women were under observation. So a big chunk of these women were those who were admitted to the hospital. Um, telemonitoring was uh, in um, 33 patients, and telemonitoring is where they put different, they put leads, you know, to monitor your heart rate and rhythm, and that can be a barrier to any sort of uh, radiology testing, MRI, CT, mammography, and um, we initially thought that they, that may be a barrier to it, but we were. Uh, we, you know, found that, you know, 33 of those women who actually had telemetry, you know, they were easily able to get those mammogram done. Now, women who did not get the mammogram done, you have to understand that 16 of those were discharged prior to the hospital. Mammography anywhere in the community or in the clinics or in the outpatient setup is always offered from Monday to Friday. It does not happen over the weekend. Supposedly, if a woman is admitted on the Friday and we enrolled her on the Friday, um, it is unlikely that she's going to get that done on Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Hopefully by Monday, she's already discharged or feeling well going home. That's the average length of stay for hospitalized women, 3.5 to 4 days. So weekend admission, so that's a uh, facility was not available. That's why we may have missed some of those women because only three women changed their mind in the study and later decided not to get a mammography done. And three women, actually their condition actually worsened. So they were upgraded you know, from floor level to a progressive care unit or IS, ICU. Now remember, when we had this um, criteria for enrolling these women, we never included any ICU patients. We never included any progressive care U patients. We never included any step down patients. All those patients are more critically sick. They have more important needs to be taken care of medically in the hospital to address before their preventive care needs come in. We only did this intervention among the floor patients who were very stable. Now, interesting thing is, you know, uh, there were no differences. You, you can go over all this list and you can see there were no differences in the baseline characteristics for these populations who received or did not receive um, the mammography. Um, <clears throat> here's the time log intervention of the, for the study intervention. And I'll tell you why it is important. If you see the total time for completion of screening mammography, in hours, that is almost 17 hours. These three components are kind of lump sum total time that is equivalent to this. So the time from the order to completion of inpatient mammography, when we order it in the EPIC medical system and uh, EMR, and then once they get the mammogram is 11 hours and 30 minutes. Mammography, this time is included into this. The mammography itself did not take much time. It's just a half an hour procedure. And five hours and 16 minutes it took so on average to take generate a report for a radiologist to review it, read it, and finalize the report. Uh, patients were informed their, about their results prior to the discharge, 95%. We did not uh, find any mass or any abnormalities on uh, those mammogram that would point towards that if those were malignants or not. 99% um, of those uh, mammography reports were um, shared with their primary care provider. I already mentioned that 27 women uh, required additional imaging and 10 women required outpatient follow-up recommended for additional imaging because radiologist was waiting for the prior films to come in. 
Um, Post-intervention study uh, perspective was uh, from the physician was generated from 79 physician at that time. I'm oh, sorry, this is the post-intervention uh, post patient's perspective. 79 patients who actually went for this procedure or intervention. They were extremely convenient, uh, convenience or extremely convenient uh, for to have a mammography was reported by 99%. They were 100% uh, were extremely satisfied with their mammography experience. 100% um, would recommend this to their family or friend for inpatient screening mammography. 96% said that if due for screening mammography during future hospital say it is likely that uh, they would uh, opt for inpatient screening mammography. And uh, they thought that they 100% uh, thought that their hospital providers were well informed about the breast cancer screening and were able to answer all the questions that they had. When we looked at a nursing perspective, there were 60 nurses you know, who were involved in this survey. And, um, and when we asked them, uh, you know, does it, doing an inpatient mammography arrangement, does it take an extra additional time? 77% disagree with that. 77% um, also disagree with the workup and imaging studies related to the admission diagnosis, like if they are admitted for syncope, a stroke, um, I was not sorry, syncope or, you know, having uh, an MRI for abdominal or, you know, chest or leg or CT scan of abdominal pelvis or anything else, would that make it difficult to coordinate mammogram during an inpatient hospital stay? 77% disagree with that. Patient care related issues such as telemonitoring uh, or isolation interfere with getting the mammogram done. 62% said, you know, it, was, it did not interfere. 38% uh, would agree that it would interfere, and that's very legitimate uh, reasoning. You know that uh, both telemetry and isolation are sometimes can be challenging. Uh, there were transport challenges to get the patient to the radiology. That uh, was reported. Uh, the woman, uh, the nurses, actually disagree with that. 67%. Um, inpatient mammography interferes with care plan, 93% disagree with that. Inpatient mammography delays the discharge of the patient, 78% disagree with that statement. And how would you like to, uh, how likely are you, uh, likely you encourage the hospital provider to order a screening mammography if one of your patients requests that in future, 92% uh, would very likely or likely to uh, request that to their hospital provider. Hospital provider and initially staff were supportive about inpatient mammography, 87% agree with that. And I think we should continue inpatient mammography uh, for patients who are overdue for screening, 100% agree with that. Um, now, the physician perspective was that uh, when we asked them, you know, uh, do they believe that getting mammography is feasible in context of caring hospitalized women, 66% agree this time that it is feasible. Coordinating mammography uh, places additional burden on workload. 66% um, said it just did a little or a lot, but do understand that we have a study coordinator who was dedicated towards that work to um, ascertaining this patient's non-adherence, ordering the test and all those things. Um, then uh, I'm afraid uh, that mammography may be abnormal or will um, need further workup. 34% uh, said, uh, that it would be a little or not, but majority think that it is, you know, if we found something else that would um, um, ad put an additional workup for them. Um, delaying discharge, 50% there agree with that, um, that it would, you know, but 50% uh, more people thought that it would not uh, interfere with the discharge. The next time if your patient goes, uh, uh, who's overdue and high risk of breast cancer would request inpatient mammography during their hospital admission, would you order that? And 60% likely would order that. So um, <clears throat> getting to the study conclusion is uh, that an inpatient screening mammography intervention was very successful for improving breast cancer screening adherence among hospitalized women. Interestingly, more African-American women uh, received an inpatient screening mammography as compared to their Caucasian counterpart. Uh, this is inverse finding from what we found as an outpatient setup there. All women who underwent screening mammography during the hospital stay were extremely satisfied. Uh, neither treating physician nor the nurses reported any uh, concerns or misgiving here. Um, briefly to limitations, there's a single study, a single hospital study, but it was a feasibility study. 
sample size can be you know considered as small however it was large enough to at least test the feasibility for the um, intervention almost one fourth of the study population who were willing to be screened did not receive mammogram those 22 women they are talking about and the reason for this may be myriad but includes weekend admissions and those with more serious presentation um, not having access to prior mammography images led to the delay in the final reporting that is uh, we have noted in this study issues related to the insurance coverage and cost were not evaluated this study this study team could not know in advance if insurance um, the company would approve their inpatient testing however in our previous study we have um, reviewed medicare uh, information that uh, clearly states that they would cover the screening mammography cost and they did not mention any clinical locale associated with that um, test location can affect the cost of screening. Both imaging and facility charges can be higher in some hospital, even within a healthcare system. The hospital where the study was conducted had a breast cancer screening suit next to the building, and this setup is not equivalent at all hospitals, even within one healthcare system. So, uh, getting to final two uh, slides here, you know. Uh, because hospitalization creates a scenario where in the patients are in close proximity to healthcare resources at a time when they may be reflecting upon their health status, strategies could be employed to counsel, educate, and motivate these patients towards their health maintenance. Currently, nurses uh, and physicians at hospital units or emergency room do not see primary prevention or cancer screening as part of their daily clinical care. Attention to the wellness promotion and disease prevention is 